I'm in the neighborhood of Toa Baja, and I'm about to meet a woman who has not had power since the day the storm hit here in Puerto Rico. Every night she's been going to sleep in the pitch black. Wow! Oh my god! The average Puerto Rican family consumes 15 kilowatt hours of electricity per day. This solar plant generates 70,000 kilowatt hours per day and has the potential to power 10,000 homes here in Puerto Rico. But that's not what's happening. Instead, this solar plant is sitting here completely idle, doing absolutely nothing. So why is this happening? Why is this solar plant sitting here completely idle, doing absolutely nothing? It's because of an inability to connect this solar farm to the electrical grid that's run by the bankrupt Puerto Rican Power Authority, PREPA. Hurricane Maria gutted the already troubled PREPA system. And now some Puerto Ricans who are still in the dark are taking matters into their own hands. This is former software engineer Javier Camacho. It's an amazing feeling when you see someone smiling. He's quite literally bringing power back to his people, DIY style, installing solar technology. So you watch a lot of movies, post-apocalyptic like movies. It's just like that. The only difference is that you are living it. So what are we doing today? We're going to show you one of the installations we did last week. We put two solar panels on the roof. They're really big. And we are connecting the panels, which is this baby right here. This is a solar charge controller. It's charging the battery. So you can see they don't have power. It comes from the panels that we have right here and it's going to continue working and charging the batteries and turning on the fridge. So this little baby is going to keep cold water, uh, it's going to store food that they used to just throw away every single day. It's going to keep them working probably until 4 a.m. 7 a.m. they wake up, turn on again, 24 hour cycle. That's how beautiful it is. So you came into this house. Yeah and brought lights back. That's correct. Javier's mission was simple, to help bring power back to as many people as he could using solar. When I noticed that my house was the brightest house, so I started helping my mom, I wanted to help my, my brother-in-law, everybody that was around me. When I had a little bit of internet, I was searching and searching. And that's how I stopped into this guy right here. That's when he discovered YouTube creator Jehu Garcia. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make a DIY solar generator. When I saw the video that he says, this could help Puerto Rico, that was like, okay, this is a long shot. And I just searched really fast on Facebook and I found him, I sent a message. In less than an hour, two hours or so, he said, yeah, I'm gonna help you. And that was like, I remember, I, I cried a little bit because it was the, that little light of hope on the end of the tunnel right there. Did Probably. you see the system? It's yeah. working. It's yeah. Javier is doing an awesome job here. Like, we installed it and we usually walk away and we're hoping like, I hope it works for him. I hope this, but like coming back a few weeks later and seeing it here is, it's amazing. I'm an ex-carpenter that is making YouTube videos now. And everything that I do in my life has been a hack because I've never had the means to do it properly. When I heard that Puerto Rico didn't have power, I thought, well, my special set of skills that I've learned in the last couple of years could really help them, right? But once I came here, and saw the degree of you know devastation and the amount of people that right. needed power, and then the um, the response that my audience had on the internet, you know, they started donating more and more and more. You know, it's like we want to show people that their stuff is not ending up somewhere where they it's not traceable. It's like it's helping this lady here, you know. And she's gonna be able to get light in her house. Light. Lights, fridge, fridge. Wow. Yeah. Y ahí pues luchando por vivir porque. They're fighting for their life, but it's better to say... The people that are supposed to take care of them, to help them, are not doing it. And that's why I get really frustrated. So right now we are in the small town of Salinas, which is on the southern coast of Puerto Rico. And I'm right in front of the Aguirre power plant, 
and it actually is a symbol for one of the major issues here in Puerto Rico regarding electricity. The power generated right here gets transmitted through power lines across the mountain range in central Puerto Rico to the northern region of the island where most of the population lives. It makes transmission through very old and dilapidated power lines extremely susceptible to damage, which is exactly what happened. Just one year to the day before Puerto Rico was struck by Hurricane Maria, there was a massive fire when a power switch overheated, causing a 2,000 pounds mineral oil tank to explode. And it actually led to 1.5 million people all around the island of Puerto Rico to lose power. A lot of people look at that episode as a precursor to what would eventually become the worst blackout in Puerto Rican history and American history as a whole. It's an outdated and environmentally unfriendly system that needs an upgrade, as hundreds of thousands remain without power. Yep. I think I have everything, Joe. Yeah. So right now, I'm in the neighborhood of Toa Baja, which is 30 minutes west of San Juan, and I'm about to meet a woman who has not had power since the day the storm hit. So you can only imagine what these past four months have been like for her. You moved in one month before the hurricane. Yes, because I arrived at, in August and the hurricane came in, in September. September and I lost what I, I really love, my instruments, because I am a musician and a music teacher. And what has it been like living in the dark for four months? Well, it's, it's so hard. If there's no moon, I can't see anything. And when you are going to cook, you can see the things that you are going to cook. What are you about to do right now, Jane? So we're about to install just an emergency solar generator. It's just a little battery that, you know, charges during the day with, with solar panel. And then in the night, she can use it to light up this place. We can put a couple of lights here. Wow! <laughs> oh my God! So oh, how, does it, how does it feel to see light in your house? Oh, it's wonderful. Believe me, for me, it's, it's something wonderful. I, I never imagined that my island is going to be completely dark, especially... Excuse me. Especially the first month was so hard for us to be in the complete darkness. I'm trying to give you a hug. <laughs> oh, man. Everything we do relies on power. I think the organized ways of helping Puerto Rico are failing. The word said, love thy neighbor. You, you will never know that meaning until you do.